Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. This is going to be week two, day two of DPL, also known as Due Process League. We've got some exciting games for you today. We're going to see Momentum versus Hypa. And right after that, we've got SPG versus Mazer. I'm at Axie, and here with me today is Baja. Baja, you got anything to say? Howdy. Um, I want to say for the record that I am good friends with both of these teams. They're very talented folks. My boy Zombie Bacon, shout out, member of Hypa. <laughs> Definitely going to be seeing what he has to bring to the table. Great player. Um, but overall, just wish bo both teams the best of luck. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, these teams really need to make their make their make make themselves known early on in the season. Because if they have one of the top four placements by the end of the Swiss part of the tournament, they will get to participate in playoffs where we have two semifinals and a grand final to crown the champion of the season. So like I said, first game of the day is going to be Momentum versus Hypa, we'll see it start here shortly, as on the side of Hypa, we have The Real Lamp Shady, Inked Geek, Birdie, Zombie Bacon, and Zillow. And on the side of Momentum, we have Masius, Razor, Ezuzo, Voxel, and Baziek. So we're just waiting for them to queue up right here. And uh, Baja, do you have any predictions on who's going to win this one? Well, I've heard a lot of great things about Momentum. I've heard a lot of good things about Hypa. They're both very... From what I could tell, they're very skilled teams, and I am excited to see what they have to bring to the table here. Yeah, both, I would both have teams, to agree. Both teams are new to the league. Both have a lot of heart, a lot of determination. Let's see what they do here. Yep, we're just going to be hopping into the match here. I'd like to point out, Momentum was seen as a wild card going into playoffs, and it was a huge surprise that they made it into DPL, which really showed that they were one of the big up-and-coming teams, as well as Hypa. Hypo was put together relatively recently after, I believe, the season one off season. Um, but, I mean, hey, we'll, we'll see what both these teams can do. They're up and coming. As we do arrive on the map, Terror Pistol. What an excellent name for the first map. We'll see what they can do. We'll see if it's an eco play or if the attackers of Hypa go for some sort of breach here. We are going to see some immediate map drawings on this map. We'll see a bomb placed in the center on servers. So what that allows some of these teams to do is play closer range on a necessarily long range map. Usually you see the defenders bringing Igmar's, Legros, possibly even the mop on factory. But because of this close range bomb, we may see some sort of auto shotty come out on the bomb or some sort of close range weapons. We'll see the classic momentum flag come out in the bottom right. A little bit of a funny drawing. We see that from a lot of teams now, a little bit of blush too. But it looks like Hypa is planning for a docks and storage breach. So it seems they may be either committing a wall charge or a door charge on dock for that line of sight and pushing up storage, trying to get control of just that general left side of the map. This does give them a lot of ground to work with, but then the defenders still have a lot of corners to work around in this office and servers area. Keep in mind that while factory is going to be a lot more open, the defenders ju have just as viable long-range options as the attackers, especially with the Lagros and the Igmar. Attackers, really their only long-range rifle is the, the Black Tar or the BLK, but they can all use, also use the AP or the Saber if necessary here. We'll actually see an Igmar and as well as a KR towards the left side, both KRs coming out as Hype is going to start their push. Now, Momentum may have the art skills, but let's see if their defensiveness holds up as well as they're making their way towards storage. Have one going around towards dock as well, but they seem to be taking their time here, not wanting to make a lot of noise. Yeah, we'll see what Hyper does. One approaching. Oh, wall charge out on dock. Smoke out in storage. May have not gotten all of that, but they make their way into storage. Maybe looking to make their way towards surveyors too. Defenders posted up over there. Making their way onto conveyor. Shots are exchanged. Bazae goes down. Flash goes out on Macy as he is stunned. Macy goes down. Trace is also. Two attackers left, three defenders left. Here we go. Trying to rotate to back towards storage. Two of them on storage. Razor goes down. And now Botzel. Now Botzel left at storage. We'll still have one on servers, but Geek, Geek trying to make his way towards storage. Birdie pinning him down with that, pinning him down with that saber. Drawing a line, maybe looking for a rotate here. They make their way. Botzel goes down, leaving Isozu, the only one left on servers. Now looking to make their way into conveyor. Isozu maybe expecting to push on push onto office, but I now he's making his way towards servers. But now they're making their way into conveyors. 
Let's see what Isozu does here with that with that Gruber. Geek has two Molotovs. Birdie makes his way in. Asozu goes down, and the first round will go to Hypa. Yeah, that was really good plays from Hypa. We actually saw Inked Geek head towards that north side of the map above conveyors, and after the door, door charge was blown on Doc, he had thrown in two flashes to counter the players, uh, Masius and Baziek there, so Zillow and Zombie Bacon could both push up. So that granted, was great. There were some really good trades there from Momentum, but in the end, the utility usage was really good there from uh, from Hypa, and that gave them the round, especially that door charge on Doc that forced those players behind cover immediately. That was a really good uh, abuse of those lines of sight, I'd have to say, as the factory map is going to be going over to the side of Hypa on attack. You know, sometimes we do see factory be a bit more attacker-sided, but I feel like we may see a defender win come out um, from Hypo's ball on that map, considering they played it so well. We'll see what they plan, though, as we are moving on to the C-Store. Hypo's still on attack 1-0 now in the series. And it's going to be a fairly large storefront with a open tellers as well. We see these double shutters connecting storage with the green door into tellers. So not a very viable wall charge option unless you're going for the bottom door. Now, if you go for the bottom or the bottom wall, excuse me, you're going to have direct access to that button, but a player could always be sitting out here outside of Teller ready to just Molotov the wall breach on storefront or the wall breach on Teller. So we'll see what the plan is here from Hypa as Momentum is aware of the possibility of a wall charge and Hypa seems more concerned with the freezer and right side of the map. They're going to be marking out some cover here in storefront, which is going to be very good for the defenders to abuse. Usually what you see is defenders will try to crouch behind uh, these little racks here that contain like drinks, food, whatever you can buy in a storefront. And sometimes it's very hard for the attackers to clear them out if they don't have a sniper set up outside. So some lines of sight being drawn out, especially in this office to shed area. Notice how the shed rotate is extremely open towards where a player could be playing on storefront. If somebody's sniping storefront, they can also cover shed at the same time. So for momentum, setting somebody to lurk and say arcade or storage and try to rotate out is going to be very dangerous especially with power being in such an open position with only one door blocking it we'll see though as the defenders are going to spawn in we will see a knack and a few other smaller guns but we will also see a legros in the hands of Ezzo. so we'll see what they do here no power weapons for the defenders Positioning is key here on C Store. Not, not a lot of room for rotates with very fast paced plays as the wall charge is applied and Birdie stationing himself right outside of that storefront to be seeing to see if there's going to be a push in the shed. But the wall charge is applied. They're starting to rotate, maybe looking to make some noise around storage. But right now they're just really trying to plan this out. To make their way into storage could be making their making their way into storage going towards shed that defender stationed up in office. Doors shot open, making their way in. Flashes. Razor with nowhere to go. He goes down. Birdie goes down. There goes the Saber. No longer in the hands of the attackers. As Macy is, Macy is patiently awaiting that push in the storefront. Flash goes out and three attackers make their way in. Let's see who makes it out on top here. Shots from Geek. Nobody home. Macy goes down. Rotzel goes down. Gaziak goes down as well. It's Sozu with nowhere to go here in bathroom. Could be looking for a defuse to try and bait him out. Sozu just looking for an opening here as they close the shutters. Shots throw down on a Sozu, and that will be it. That sword goes to Hypa. Beautiful, beautiful round once again from Hypa. But I want to point out, Momentum completely caught Birdie Saber off guard, off guard by opening up those shutters, which allowed uh, Masius to just take him out immediately. And then he was able to rotate off. Granted, not so much effect as he was pushed out by a Lamp Shady. But we did also see a Zombie Bacon go on a rampage that round. We saw him take out Voxel as he tried to counter the Teller push. And then immediately a 180 to kill Baziak. So good display from both Shady and Zombie that round. Ink Geek put, putting in one kill of his own. And also dropping that smoke to sort of distract Baziak towards the beginning of the round. The positioning was good there for the defenders, but I feel like maybe they uh, maybe they didn't team up one v two versus their gunfights. I mean, we saw the we saw the shutters open from Tellers, 
and that was perfect communication. Masius got a kill. But then I, I think if they continued playing off of each other like that, if they continued that great team mentality, they would have continued to rack up kills and possibly stopped Hypa this round. But I also want to point out, they did bring a fair amount of Lagroses for C-Store, which is quite uncommon, but maybe they were going for some sort, sort of wall bank strat, as uh, the walls are very thick on C-Store, which is going to be the polar opposite here on Killhouse, a very, very thin map, but also a very large one, Fleeing Vice. We're going to see a bomb centralized in Kitchen here towards the southern side of the map where the attacker truck will spawn. We're also going to see a red door in Courtyard with two windows to cover it. So maybe we'll see some defenders try to cover that red door from outside. Or possibly we'll see Club as a power position to hold on to Breezeway as well as Courtyard. Something I'd like to point out is while the walls are going to be very, very bangable here, there's going to be a lot more cover, especially in places like Hallway here. You see this dynamic piece of cover that you have to go through the middle of. And that just provides an extreme amount of cover, meaning you can't just do straight line wall banks. You're going to have to do something a bit diagonal, something a bit different. But the attackers and defenders both aware of this wall charge they could do on hallway. A simple entrance from Breezeway and a wall charge straight into the bomb site. It might be shut down by a Molotov and a barbed wire, but if the attackers pace this right, if Hypa paces this right, they could just get a third round on attack, which would be magnificent for them going into the second quarter of this game we will see a little bit of concern for the courtyard door but it seems hypa just wants to take club control as that's the main counter to their strategy here two barbed wire actually three barbed wires gonna be uh, drawn out here by the defenders two in hallway uh, one specifically towards the breezeway and then one in office to counter the lockers push defenders might be giving up a little bit too much ground here but we'll find out as you know, a basic wall charge play, you need players closer to the site. I mean, they're playing for what they expect as Voxel does have the auto shotty and Masius might be going for a spawn peek here. And we are underway. Goes for the mop shot, misses. Fortunate for Masius, but they're but they're going to continue uh, marching onward. They make their way towards Breezeway. Again, you notice that wall on Breezeway shutting off that entry. But uh, another mop shot goes out. Nothing just yet, but they make their way into reception. Again, trying to follow through with that plan of Breezeway to club. Or maybe a, perhaps a wall charge. Counter snipe by Birdie! And now they're making their way out the Breezeway. Ooh. Birdie was tagged though. Know. Birdie was tagged though, keep that in mind. Yeah, Birdie, not a lot, not a leg to stand on here. As they make their way into club. Wall bangs, nobody home, but they make their way into club here. And there's four, four of the defenders. That looks like Wallbang City. Somebody got tagged heavily. Brack goes out. That does a bit of damage. Voxel goes down. And it is just, they're just, you just get so bottlenecked up in there that, it's Sozu goes down, Razor goes down, Bossy goes down. It is a clean sweep here as they go for the defuse. And wow. that will secure the set for Hypa 3-0. Yeah, first quarter of the game is gonna be 3-0 in favor of Hypa. Like I mentioned there uh, to you, Birdie did end up getting taken out by a nade to clear some barbed wire. So rest in peace to Birdie as the team kill does come out. But what does it matter? Hypa has three rounds now. Like you mentioned before, that's sort of like that choke point. That pinch point was really struggle. We saw a Molotov come out almost perfectly on time, but I believe Zombie and Shady were already through that Molotov and the auto shotty was just taken out immediately. I feel like Momentum played that correctly, yes. But at the end of the round, they all get stacked up and Hypa just starts to abuse that. They start to say, hey, we have more map control. Let's go ahead and blow it. And we don't even have to wait for the Molotovs because if we throw a flash in, we don't have to worry about 15 damage. We just need to make sure we shoot them before they're unblind. Which, you know, in this game, even turning away from flashes, you're still going to get affected slightly. So the attackers have the advantage in that fight. So maybe we'll see a turnaround as momentum is on the attack now back here on Terror Pistol. Or we'll see another reign of terror from Hypa, possibly a 6 0 half. We'll find out as Hypa's concerned about the conveyors area. Once again, this conveyors area is going to be very open and susceptible to a door or a wall charge on that dock position to clear it out a lot easier. But also green door is going to be very effective for both attackers and defenders to use. We'll see some really good lines of sight possibly, especially from this office into green door. But we might also see somebody lurking in storage as they are, as Hypa, it seems, are going to be opting to barb it. 
a little bit interesting, but it may seem like they're trying to hold conveyors. Momentum's planning for some sort of office split here as power is definitely in, in the feasible range for them. They don't want to bother with conveyors, even though they have marked a position that a player could be playing in. So we'll see. Both teams may use conveyors here or both teams may just say, no, too open. I don't want to use it or risk it. As it seems like while the defenders are going to have advantage with the attackers going office, the flashes are going to be much more effective on this right side of the map. I mean, we saw Inked go all the way up on this north side of conveyors and throw flashes in for his teammates. But when you're that far away, you can't really rotate in to help them. You just have to hope your utility does its job and your teammates do their job. So attackers probably going to have a better chance with their utility here on the right side of the map. But we'll also see three defenders, actually four defenders, leaning towards the left side of the map with Mop and two Igmars. One of those is going to be on Inked, and the mop is going to be on Birdie, the resident sniper for Hypa. We'll see, though, as Momentum's just going to plan out their attack with a door charge and a nade as they push in towards Office. Definitely taking it slow towards Office as we have, again, the play from the play towards Storage tends to be a popular route on this map. As they make their way towards Office, got that? Waiting to put that wall charge down, trying to make as little noise as they can. And remember, power is right there below office. So if, it, if they can secure it, drop down their hit power, and it's going to be a huge power shift in yeah. favor of momentum. As they make their way in, flashes out. Zombie will need to secure this. Absolutely. Momentum making their way. Like I said, going for that power. They hit it. Bouncy, it goes down. Birdie, birdie lethal with the snipers here. As Voxel is right there on that balcony. Zil Zylo goes down. And now Molly goes out. That takes that'll hit him a little bit. Macy is tagged heavily here. Lamp Shady looking for a flank here. Gets shut down though. Razor goes down by the Igmar. And now Macy is looking to baby maybe, maybe, maybe the trade here. Macy goes down, but the Voxel goes down as well. Isozu is all on his lonesome here, and he'll go down as well. Defenders take Terror Pistol. Wow. Beautiful display from Hypa. I mean, after Momentum ran out of utility there, they just used their Molotovs, and they used their utility so well. I mean, they had to push through two barbed wires there to even think about getting to the site, and Hypa were just like, hey, let's just uh, Molotov it as soon as they flash and waste all their flashes. And doing that on Factory... That is an accomplishment. I mean, Absolutely. they did they did have to use momentum, did have to use some more flashes to clear out office and storage. But I mean, it flashes are more advantageous in that close range position. So I'm not surprised they use them a bit more, you know, sparingly. And don't forget, once they came into that servers, they were just stuck. They had to either yeah. go for the barbed wire to front Fize, or they had to go, or they had to just stay there and just wait for them to get like to get killed and whatnot. Yeah, Sorry. I'm not sure where the nade went. It. Oh, you're fine. I'm yeah. not sure where the nade went on that. I mean, the nade didn't even get used on the first barbed wire, not even the second. So Hypa possibly picking up a grenade here. I wonder what they might do with that. Um, we are back to Axe Sword. This is going to be your Sea Storm map for this half of the game. It's 4-0 in favor of Hypa right now, maybe taking a 6-0 half, or we'll see momentum bring back two rounds here. It seems like Hypa is on a streak, though, as power may be the option with a wall charge. For momentum an early wall charge could definitely be beneficial to them but it seems hypa has planned out a barbed wire on that storage to arcade push so we'll find out office probably won't be held by uh by hypa um considering that uh they want to opt for you know holding power holding tellers you know they're aware of these wall charges but momentum they're just thinking hey we only have to go through one and then we have a better option in tellers and taking this north side right by power is going to be so much more powerful for them because instead of having to rotate all the way through storage and risk being hit with a flank, you have direct access to power and direct access to tellers so close together. You set one person to just hold this freezer door while the rest of your team pushes out. That's going to be very, very strong. So we'll see if they can make it through these barbed wires or if Hypa has uh, picked up that grenade as auto shoddy it seems to be for Hypa, is going to be on power. And that's going to be on the real Lamp Shady. We'll see what magic he can uh, brew up as Momentum start their push with a shotgun and no frag grenade, it seems like. So this barb might be a nightmare. 
an air of desperation for momentum as Hypa has that 4 0 streak. Smoke goes out on power. As mm. Shady is right there with that auto shot. He doors blasted open. Botzel right there prepping for a push. Preparing for them to confront there. Molotov goes out on arcade door. Yeah, Mas Masius knows Inked is at the bottom of the storefront. You can hear him clacking. Trying to go for that, uh, trying to go for a TP clock there. Two go down! Birdie gets a double kill here! Botzel trying to go for a pick, takes down Zylo! And Birdie right there with the ink bar! Trying to see for, trying to see if he can take down Botzel on the window. Chapter has changed, nobody home! And we are at a standstill, ladies and gentlemen, after that double kill. See what they do here. Botzel making his way in. Could be looking for go for the barbed wire. Frag flash goes out. They take the utility off of the two off of the two attackers that died in the barbed wire. Throw a smoke. Heath goes down. And now they're just looking for a way into that arcade. Flash goes out. Shady right there with the auto shot. He birdies as well with the ink bar. Auto shot. He takes down Botzel. Now Turk makes his way. Takes down his Sozu. And Macy is right there. Will he be able to do anything? No! Triple kill with the auto shotty. And Hype are proving they are more than Hype with a sweep like that. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful from Hype there. I mean, even with the trades there for momentum, which were so strong, especially those long range picks on that pixel angle. I mean, not checking one corner like that, it's going to punish you, especially on a close range map. What what were they thinking? That's what that's what I want to know. I mean, obviously they had, they have gotten the picks there, and they're they're thinking, okay, RK is most likely clear. But you know, when you're pushing through that barbed wire, you got to expect somebody there. Right. And Hypa Hypa put somebody there, and so did Momentum. Momentum held on to power as well. So I'm not sure I'm not sure what the mindset was there, but I'm thinking as soon as they got those two kills, they were like, hey, it must be clear. So we did see the wall charge go in. The person dropped the wall charge and tried to react in time, which, unluckily enough, was favoring the auto shoddy on uh, on Lamp Shady. But now that begs the question. There's a possible frag grenade and a possible wall charge in the hands of the defenders for the final round of this half. <laughs> Thanks I'm wondering. Spicy here. Are they going to make a rotate? say let's say lockers here into hallway or possibly a rot ignoring the screen door they could have a wall charge office to lockers or possibly one wall charge that could greatly benefit them if timed correctly is putting a wall charge here in club because now that the uh, i believe the attackers don't have any more clackers i would have to check for one moment but if the attackers don't have any more clackers they have to go through green door their best bet would be club, and I mean, just waiting to time that wall charge would be the play. And it does look like a door charge is in the hands of Voxel, but I do not see a clacker. So that may be the case here. They may be trying to use the defender's counter clack to, you know, abuse that. We'll see if the wall charge comes out, though, as Auto Shoddy has returned once again. It's made a star appearance before. It's We'll see it again. And we'll see some good barbed wires as well. Birdie actually going to have the saber as well as the clacker is going to be on zombie. Actually dropping that, it seems. Wall charge is in the hands of the defenders. So hopefully we'll see something interesting here as Momentum is going to start their push, their final push on attacking side for at least now. Hopefully we'll see something come out of it as Voxel is going to be the first one in reception. Wall charge is on that barbed wire door. And again, that air of desperation in the in the hands of momentum here, coming in here with so much hype. Yet they fall to Hypa here, in a possible 6-0 sweep. But we don't. We're not going to give up just yet. A they have to kick the door. Ball. Yeah, they, they have, have to, to kick that door. They don't have a shotgun. They have. They're going to get blown up. They have to sacrifice somebody. Don't put no. two there. Don't put two. Oh, he doesn't get it. He didn't get it. Oh no. Breezeway is a death trap as they make their way in. I don't think they realize Birdie is there with that sniper. Birdie goes down! The backbone of the team has been dropped as they make their way into the hallway. Bozzy ain't right there. Real Lamp Shady takes down Razor. Voxel making his way in. Could be looking for a pick on the auto shoddy. Zombie goes- Zombie Bacon goes down as well. As they're starting to clear out club right there on hallway. Could be looking for a wall bang into kitchen as Macy is approaching the site. Trying to get back to kitchen, trying to get back to site. Well, more wall banks. 
and a lot is going on at a at a lot or fast pace here. Should be looking for a push in the lockers here. Let's see what they do. Everybody yeah, looking for an opening. They throw the molly right on top of Macy as he goes down right in the fire in the flames as they make their way into lockers here. Time's gonna run out here if they aren't fast enough. 30 seconds on the clock. They are racing the clock here. Molly goes out. That could be the deciding factor. I think it is. I think Voxel's it is. They through. run for the fire. He takes a lot of damage. Vossel goes down. Are they going to have enough time? I don't think so. They go in and Soldu goes down. Zolo goes down. Hypo has secured this. Fuzzy goes down. And Hypo, live it up to their name. Bring in the excitement as they soar into that 6 0 sweep. Beautiful. Uh, I am just astonished by what Hypo has been doing here. I mean, granted, they didn't use the wall charge there like expected, but still, they shut down an entire flank. They shut down an entire pinch even when they lost the initial fights. And that was just mind-blowing. I mean, the plan was there. And even though it didn't succeed, they backed up, they analyzed the situation, and they said, okay, where are these players going to be? And then they used their saved utility. They used two Molotovs there perfectly to just keep, keep momentum peeled in half, to keep them from even pinching like they want to. And playing the clock like that was just perfect for them because there was so much hesitation with that wall charge, because there was hesitation to push in. Hypa abused the clock there and ended up having utility at the end of the round for them to win it. But we are on a new map set now. And my props, three new maps. And my props goes out to Momentum. They could have easily had that there. They were moving well. And you, you just know that they were trying so hard there, but it just wasn't enough. They need just that more oomph. To get exactly. that win. Just a little bit more pressure. But I mean, now the pressure's on. It's 6-0. We've seen com legendary comebacks before, but I mean, Hypa has just decimated this game so far. I'm I'm impressed to say the least. I'm speechless half of the time as I can't think of anything else to say than what their plans are and how just amazing they're doing. But new set of maps. This might be the final one as Hypa is on the defense. So We'll see here, as it is the second half of the game. This is round seven. So keep in mind, the teams are going to be on the same sides. But we'll see an entirely new set of maps. So Hypa sort of planning out for this Toxic Hold. Power is going to be in somewhat of a pinch position here for the attackers. But one well-placed defender, say, in North Office or two in Toxic, could completely shut down that idea as momentum does seem like they're planning for some sort of fan push or possibly some players that are going to be on the offices. It seems they've marked out a possible barbed wire, which they'll be spot on on. And I mean, if they're confident in their plan of taking this sort of storage area and possibly fan, we may see a clean sweep, a clean reverse sweep, actually, from Momentum as they're going to be preparing in their truck. Saber will come out from the attackers. We're also going to see the clacker on Masius. And a mop on Birdie holding fan. This may be the end. Hypa more chemistry than a periodic table. We know how strong their defense is. They just lock down certain angles, and there is nothing the attackers can do about it. But let's see how they handle this here. Razor stationed on fan as they're making their way towards south office. Birdie right there with the mop. Could be anticipating a push from them, or he's keeping mm. that angle on fan. Wall charges on Azozu. Charges on Azozu as he makes yeah, his wall way. charge. Could be looking for a dock push, maybe? I'm not sure Possibly. how smart that is with Shady right there waiting for it as well. Maybe some sort of wall charge out of the office? Fire for the red door. Quick uh, quick barbed wire placement on the bridge. We are at a standstill. Fire for the truck. Explosives go out on go out on dock. Let have Shady retreat. Ink's taking shots on the razor. Flash is out on conveyors. Fossil making his way in. Lamp Shady right there. Shots are exchanged. Fossil goes down. Zozu goes down as well. Momentum taking shots on the geek. Flashes out. Bozzy goes down. It is not looking good for momentum. As Macius is in a monsoon at 9mm as they make their way in. One of the attackers goes down. Razor right there with that. Razor right there with that saber. Razor goes down. It is all up to Macius as he's stuck in that, in that south office. And Hypa clean sweep. As they roll with this into game two with a 7 0 lead. 7 0 is unthinkable for Hypa here. I mean, 
they're so far ahead. And as long as they keep that momentum, they keep the excitement, they might continue it. I mean, with a display like that, I am just astonished. I mean, I said I was out of words, but the sheer, like, the sheer skill, the sheer idea, the sheer, like, willpower that came out of Hypa there just left me, just was breathtaking. I mean, Hype is a good team. Momentum is a good team. And I know both of these teams personally. But the way that Hypa just took that, that is a Hypa I have not seen before. I mean, when I was watching Hypa in, throughout these past few months, throughout these tournaments, yes, they're an up-and-coming team. Yes, they're a strong team. But I saw performances like a tie in DPC Open. I saw performances and scrimmages that were neck and neck, like seven to five, six and six. And a seven zero coming from Hypa has just completely blown my mind out of the water and has shown me that Hypa is more than just an up and coming team. They're going to be one of the strongest teams this season, especially with a performance like that. And imagine the boosted portfolio of Hypa if they're able to do a double seven zero sweep. That'll probably be a first I mean, in UPL history. That will put them, I believe, in the top four for this weekend. At, at, well, I mean, at the end of this weekend, that'll put them in top four for the bracket if they do the double sleep win. I mean, at this point, if Momentum wins, they do keep Hypa from getting that triple point. But also, if they tie, they keep Hypa from getting that double point. So, I mean, any performance here from Momentum is going to be super helpful for them. I mean, the fact that they had perfectly predicted most of Hypa's plans, but just couldn't execute on them shows me that they know what they're doing. It just seems they're they're kind of falling off or one or two areas. I mean, we saw the perfect like coordination with uh, Masius and Voxel hitting that teller button and getting a kill on a saber for free. But I want to see more of that. I think the teamwork is definitely there. It's just not it's just not coming out. It's not blooming out like Hypa is right now. And that's why Hypa is being so dominant because on top of committing to a plan, they're also being extremely overconfident in their skills. Yes, overconfidence may end up being a flaw and you may end up losing some players because of that in the end. But I mean, against against the momentum where the plans are just like predicted perfectly, sometimes you don't have a second option. You need to have that confidence. And I, I'm going to commend Hypa for that. And like I said, the positioning here by Hypa is just A1. You know, they have that... They have that guidance, that coordination to be, okay, you go here, you go here, you go here, let's just lock this down. Oh, yeah. I would have to, I would like happily agree with that. I mean, positioning from both teams was good, but I mean, the mid, keep in mind, the mid round changes, the mid round mindset where you have to adapt to what's going on is going to be a really, really big deal, you know, because sometimes you don't get to predict plans perfectly. You don't get to do that sort of thing. And sometimes you have to adapt. Sometimes you have to think about it. And for Hypa to just display that, display their that their positioning was superior, help them get that 7-0 win. And I want to see what comes out of them as well as momentum in the second game because it is a best of two, keep in mind. We are waiting for that second game to start. So I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping momentum you know, they get some momentum in this. Granted, like, Absolutely. I, that may be a bad pun, pun, but I really, really want to see momentum take some from Hypa here. Hypa, a really strong team, like I said, but momentum was also the wild card coming into qualifiers that made it into DPL. So I want to see them perform well. I want to see them strive in, in this season. But, you know, with a display like that from Hypa, it's going to be hard. Momentum has to put up a fight here. And this could just be the kick in the balls that Momentum needs going into the second round because a 7-0 is just not... That is just a blemish on the record, and you just know that they're going through a lot here as they try to secure this second game. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, we'll see. It seems like Hype and Momentum are both getting prepared for the second game. I mean, any predictions going into the second game? Who? What do you think is going to happen in the second game? I am hoping for a more evenly matched game. I'm hoping for a sort of back and forth flow here. Because I know okay. the momentum has it in them. 
we've seen them do well before. I have watched them scrim. They are all great teams, great guys. Let's see if they can pull it out here. I would be. A, I'd be. A, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be a liar if I said I wasn't rooting for them. Kind of. Well, let's see what they do here. I mean, yeah. I feel like. I feel like in the second game, we might see some uh, some different maps. I mean, that factory map. I think Hypa just knew it too well. I mean, they they knew exactly what utility to use and such like that. And if momentum starts thinking like that, thinking like Hypa, they might right. you know take some of these rounds off them. A lot of the things we see is. These, these teams come up with really, really good plays in the beginning. And then when they swap sides, the other team is just like, oh, okay, we'll use that plan because you didn't you didn't think about how to counter it. Because sometimes you need to think like the enemy. You need to think, if we plan for this, how are they going to counter it? And then slightly adjust it to be like, okay, they can't do this, they can't do this, they can't do this. So, but it's a double-edged sword. I mean, if you plan out a perfect defense, if you plan out a perfect attack, another team might use that against you, and then you don't have a counter to it. Even if you literally just played that plan and you know what they're going to do next. So, double-edged sword. But if momentum picks up on that, I feel they're definitely going to take more rounds off of Hypa and possibly uh, win the next one, I feel. So, they did come back fairly strong. Um, when they played last week, I believe, I believe they played against BTG. Um, I'm not sure what the scoreline was uh, on the first game, but the second game was fairly close. So we'll see what momentum can do. They do have a strong second game. And, I mean, Hypa, like I said, performance is excellent so far, but I want to see if they can keep the momentum. Just waiting for both teams to get into game here. We'll see them in just a moment. Individually, though, what do you think about these players, Baja? I think now I'm not too familiar with some of Momentum's guys. I know that they're I know that they're great on the field. They're great in the game, but I don't too, know too many of them personally. While on the other hand, with Hypa, I know Birdie. I know I know Zombie. I've talked to them. Zombie's a good friend of mine. And I just hope the best for both of them. You know, I don't really have a bias either way. Just seeing what they do here. Fair. I mean, some of these players individually are just going off. And I mean, because that's usually because of power weapons. We see snipers on right. birdie. We saw the auto shoddy twice on, uh, on lamp shady. So, I mean, very, very good, like individual performance, but I want to see what the team mindset is in both these teams. We can't really hear communications, which is unfortunate. But I mean, I would love to just hear what is going on inside these players' heads, like when they're going for these like desperate pushes or when they're going for these last second diffuses or th things like that, things that make them really tense. Because I'm thinking, okay, if I'm in a situation like that, I'm, I'm trying to figure things out while adrenaline's going through me. But I want to know, are these players going to be a lot more calm and collected while they're planning these things out? Or are they going to be on top of it? Are they going to be overactive? Are they going to be like, the people that are making the incentive, you know? I I really want to know what is happening in the mindsets of these players individually. Because it's not it's not all it's not all just an individual or all just a team effort. You have to have a balance of the two. Because sometimes you're put into those clutch situations. Sometimes you're put into things like that. And it's like you have to have the individual skill for that. But also on top of that. You need to work together well as a team so you don't constantly end up in those clutch situations. So, Hypa taking the first one, 7 0, just mind blowing that their utility usage, especially in the first half of the game, was just on point. Granted, we saw a little bit less utility come out on their defending side, just some simple barbed wires or one or two Molotovs, but we saw some major strides from Hypa on attack. So, and that isn't to discredit momentum at all. Momentum had predicted a lot of their plays perfectly, but they just didn't hold up to it seems. So like I'm saying, this individual skill, sometimes these, these mid round changes, I want to see them adapt to. I totally. really want to see them change. And it's so, moments, yeah. And it's moments like, like uh, the C store play where they were just bottlenecked on that storage and, they tried to flash in. They knew that the auto shot he was there, but they just weren't ready to confront him. And he just goes, he just goes on a tear, gets a triple kill. They know what they're going to do. They just don't know how to follow through with it. 
Oh, yes, definitely. Agreed, agreed, agreed. I mean, if in a situation like that, Hypa is on top, but I want to see what momentum can do. So I think we're going to call it here for just a moment. We're just going to wait for both teams to prepare. We're going to give these teams a break. We're going to get them into the yeah. mindset. And Baja, um, any predictions for the second game before we take a short break? You know, like I said, a, a, a lot of desperation for momentum. You know, they came in with such praise, such prowess, and yet they've been shown up at every opportunity here. I just hope they can bring this back. And if, if anything, I just hope to see more good plays from Hypa because Hypa just brings the heat every single round, and it's just incredible. So we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, just waiting for the teams to get ready here. And we'll be right back with more high-octane action on the DPL. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting this second game started. We're on the loading screen currently. And Hypo last versus round, momentum. Hypo <laughs> versus momentum. Thank you. And last round, we saw a heated 7-0 squash. There was not a lot momentum could do, but we're closing in on the second round of two. And let's see what they bring here. Take it away, Adax. Thank you very much, Baja. I mean... 7-0 sweep from Hypa. I mean, we saw Momentum perfectly predict some of their plans, but I mean, a lot of this just ended up getting shut down by uh, Hypa's confidence. And I mean, granted, they were overconfident in some plays, which could end up being a downfall for them against some other teams. But I mean, in this situation where they want to have control, it's going to be very important. We are on Southern Mountain. This is going to be one of the new maps from this most recent patch we do see a new sort of toxic environment and that's going to be this fallen little like catwalk or fallen bridge here you can jump over it but i mean it's pretty risky if you fall you're gonna die so some people are just gonna opt to walk around it we do see the toxic and storage green door on this north uh northeastern side of the map as the attacker truck is going to be right near it so i mean easy green door access but also easy you know spawn peak access for the defenders so hypa starting on defense we may see birdie go for some you know some cheekiness some a little bit of overconfidence but bomb is in no man's land and what does that mean for the defenders it means for the defenders they need to play back far back they've either got to set somebody directly in the bomb site and take that risk or they've got to sit far back and just wall bang the bomb with legroses and just sit and wait to see what the attackers do and it seems that might be what they're planning for they are gonna put that barb on shelving 
as there is a current mechanic with the game where you can barb uh, the fan and it will not explode. And they're also going to be barbing office. So they're aware of that northern red door. It can definitely be a split push, but it seems momentum. They just want to go for this push directly into no man's land, possibly a smoke and then a direct push into the bomb site. Maybe we'll see a quick defuse as Inked is going to be positioned on the north side of the map and Toxic, possibly looking for a wall bang onto Green Door, and all the trucks are going to be open. There's going to be two Lagroses out, uh, KR, Igmar, and the mop on Birdie, as Voxel is going to be the first one to cross storage. Shots right now for the wall here. Could be anticipating what Geek has planned, but now we're just waiting for somebody to make a move here. Indeed, right there with that leg Ross in case they want to push into there. Wall charge applied onto the dock door. Charge goes out on number five, and they are making their way in. Macy is right there with that with that saber. As, as Razor goes to regroup, Flash goes in. Fire, fire going out. Nothing nothing connected just yet. Mob shot onto Voxel. Not, nothing connects just yet. No. Nobody nothing really making no. an impact. Smoke goes out near No Man's Land. I'm lagging. We're back. Making their way on. Razor goes down. Now Botzel could be making his way. Botzel goes down. Five eight goes down. Double kill. Macius takes down Birdie. And now Macius and Es Isozu. Isozu goes down. Macius, the only one left with that saber. Maybe not the best idea to take that first round. But they got that angle on the bridge. Let's see what Macius does here. I don't think he can save it. 60 seconds left on the clock, but we can only hope. I think he might go for it. He did pick up the clacker, so it may just be his best option here. Inked kind of just did shut down that bush. Keep your finger crossed, folks. As the first round begins. Let's see what we do here. Yeah, it looks like Massius might be going for a save here. He does want to keep that saber and clacker. Important utility for the next few rounds. 30 seconds. Time's a ticking. Let's see what they do here. Macy is not a lot of time to waste. Can you be looking for a forfeit here? Just stay out there until the time runs out? Let's... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, man. He just wants to save that clacker. It's it's important. I don't I don't blame him. Yeah, I, mean, I suppose so. He would have to get an ace to win the round at this point. And I mean, he's already committed to it. Why would he peek it now? Ink's going to pick up that mop off of Birdie. KR on Shady and Allegros on Zombie. So good stuff from uh, from Hypo. We saw Ink's Geek shut down two kills because that smoke was just barely misplaced. So small things like that. You know, mid-round plays, I called it out last game. Those mid-round changes, that mid-round adaptation is going to be key. And Hypa has already shown it going into this game. I mean, good entry picks, especially for Masius. But I want to see what they can do more here on, you know, not an easier map per se, but a more obvious to attack map. Because, I mean, there's so many options on that map that the defenders are just spread out and are playing to adapt. So we'll see what happens as we leave that factory that is now, you know, in rubble due to the uh, due to the defenders. And we are going to be moving on to our Sea Store map. So this is the first set, meaning Hype is going to stay on defense for these next two rounds. But we'll see what they can do against Momentum's attack. We are on Phoenix Apollo, a pretty popular map. We usually see on defense, we'll see two players set up in the arcade for some sort of crossfire, possibly a barbed wire onto site. And we'll see a player all the way back in office holding on to bomb, you know, because even if a storefront breach comes on, you can just spam through that office door and kill anybody there. And it seems, you know, that's exactly what Hype has marked up. They know what they're doing here. They have a crossfire using the teller hole and the office door. So good lines of sight onto bomb for Hypa. And the push seems like it's going to be for Shed and Arcade, it seems like here for Momentum. A barbed wire does seem like it will go down in freezer for Hypa. Maybe not opting to hold it. We'll find out as Momentum thinks there might be a player there. Hmm. I mean, it's in all reign of possibility for Hypa to put a player there. But I'm just thinking, now that they've already set up this important cross, where are they going to put the other players? On Arcade? On freezer? Possibly storage for alert? I am not sure to say the least, but something I'd like to point out about this map. We've got freezer window here. This is ballistic, meaning you're not going to be able to shoot through it, but you can see through it. So that may be important to hold the rotate for uh, for Hypa, or possibly if Momentum wants to just hold their flank and not risk anything, they can do that. Barbed yeah, wire will go down. Yes, power isn't shed. It's very open, but also it's definitely susceptible to a lurk 
as it seems one defender will be playing in that storage area. It is going to going to be a silo. So we'll see as the attackers, it seems like they're going to be going for this wall charge. Masius has it. And I want to see what type of split push they perform here. Momentum with a glimmer of hope here, but let's see if the spark can turn to a flame as they're trying to bait out a bait out shed. They're so trying they, to shotgun that red door, but they don't know oh, it doesn't work. I forgot you can do that. But now they're not sure they realize that that doesn't work. It's a couple shots go out from Engage. Storefront push. Molotov goes out. Might not get all of it. Two Molotovs. That will certainly cover it. As Voxel tries to make his way into storage, Frag goes out. And now Zillow right there for Voxel if he pushes in. We are, at we are at a standstill here. Fire between Ingeek and Macius. Voxel makes his way and takes down Zulo. Shady making his way towards Voxel. Auto shot it goes down. Take down Auto shot it. And now he's making their way. Bracer goes down as well. Zombie making his way into Freezer. Take down Voxel. Take down Buzzy. And now it is a two. It is a two v three here as Ingeek and Asus are playing cat and mouse here. Ingeek goes down. And now the stakes are even. The pendulum of power shifting ever so rapidly. Auto Shotty and Igmar still left. We know how lethal Birdie is with that Igmar. Flare goes out. See what they do here. A lot on the table here. Making their way on the storefront. Auto Shotty right there. Macy is taking shots in the office. Isozo trying to clear out freezer. Remember, Zombie Bacon right there with that tell and teller with that auto shot. He's to bait out a defuse here. Let's see what happens here. Shots for the shots in the Igmar, nobody home. More defuse, taking more and more off that timer. More more and more shots. Nothing connecting. Will they have enough time to do it? Birdie making his way into storefront. Shots go up. Macius goes down. He still do all on his lonesome. And that'll leave Birdie all on his lonesome after the trade between Bacon and Isosu. What a round. That is the closest that momentum has come to securing around this entire game. Props to momentum. What a play. What a round. I mean, beautiful from Voxel. They were taking out uh, Zylo and the Lamp Shady. I mean, the play was there. The entry picks were there. I mean, like I said last game, they got the entry picks. They knew what they were doing, but they just, they kind of fell apart on the execution. I mean, the push was there. I mean, the timing on it was great for Zombie and, uh, and Birdie there. But I mean, the execution, after those initial picks, the execution fell apart. It was like, where do we go from here? And I want to know what Momentum is doing to fix that. They they just did it almost perfectly that round, but then it just sort of fell apart in the 2v2. I mean, now that we're on Thief Rush, this is going to be an e one of the more uh, one of the more open vault maps. I mean, we might see some different plays, especially since Button is going to be so easy to access, and it's the last round. There's a door charge on Momentum, and they could easily... You know, just go through green, hit the button here, and then go for some sort of office play. And that completely counters these two barbed wires that Hypo wants to set up in club. But I mean, momentum. The ball has to start rolling somewhere. The inertia has to come in. The momentum has to start as it seems they are opting for just an immediate button press. Four barbed wires planned for Hypo. This is going to be a struggle for momentum. But I mean... If they can pull out this round, it's going to be a legendary one, to say the least. The utility is not going to be high on either teams besides the barbed wire, but there is still a frag grenade in play here. So, I mean, using that frag grenade properly on momentum will definitely help them. Night vision, not so much per se, but they do have plenty of flashes on a frag to get themselves into the bomb site and clear out those positions. We will see the defender spawn in now. Barbed wires will be going down in their designated positions. Auto Shoddy going to be playing in office. We'll also see, it seems like, a Tub 12 and a Grouper coming out towards that south side of the map. And we'll see a Knack and a KR sort of spread out across the map. It seems like Hypa does not want to hold this north side at all. No long-range guns here except for possibly the Gruber. So it seems club control might just be given up. One frag grenade could definitely take out both those barbed wires but remember, they still need to hit that button. So we'll find out as Momentum is going to begin their push. Voxel is going to take a moment and wait for his team. Definitely trying to regroup. You just know that there's so much on the line here. That they're definitely taking their time, definitely thinking things out. As the, as the wall charge, as the door charge is applied, Fazek with that clacker. And again, 
uh, button is so easy to get. It's just a skip and a jump away. Flash goes out. Look at they hit the button here. And they do. Hit the button and Isozu gets tagged. Down to half health, but Zozu goes down. Zillow right there. Wall charge going through. Bazai gets tagged. Now Botsel. Botsel now in this. Botsel now steps in. A lot of damage all over here. Frag clears out the smoke. Frag clears out the barbed wire. So Molly goes out on the door. Vault door closing again. Razor makes his way into backstage. Takes a little bit of damage. Botsel runs through the flames into kitchen. A lot of bravery here. They make their way in. Birdie with shots for the wall. Razor takes down Zelo. Door opens again. Ingeek, Ingeek and Zelo go down. Double kill by Razor. Razor looking for a shot for the wall. Flap Chain takes down, takes down Razor. Takes down Bossy. Takes down Bustle. Triple kill. And now he's, and now they're trying to look for a reconnect here. Vault door closing. Vault door constantly closing and reopening. Basius, the last one left. Shots for the wall. Gets tagged pretty heavily. Takes down, takes down Zombie Bacon. And now Macy is trying to make his way back, looking for an opening here. I don't think he's gonna do it. Lamp Shady right there. One shot. One shot. And Lamp Shady, not a bead of sweat on the face as they take this set. Well, Hypa takes the set. Beautiful, beautiful. Once again, more beautiful displays from Hypa. I mean, momentum. They're coming extremely close to winning these rounds. They're in 2v2s, they're in 1v2s. And they are leaving Hypa with one or two members left alive. They're destroying Hypa's economy. But they just aren't securing these final kills. They aren't fully going through with the execute. And I can't emphasize enough how much that's punishing them. They're getting these opening picks. They're getting the map control that they need. And it's just falling apart afterwards. I don't know if it's communication. I don't know if it's a fault with the plan. But something is going on. And uh, Hypa is just taking advantage of that. Momentum is so close they're on like a pin they're just on the tipping point to winning rounds and i just want to see them fix that i mean now that we're on defense for momentum we may see some very very high antic plays here but hypa once again taking an extremely strong lead in front of momentum 3-0 in the first quarter or the first set as they are going to be planning for this north red door as i mentioned this north red door will be a bit of an off play but it's definitely going to put a lot of pressure on the defenders office will definitely be some sort of a choke point here as you can breach it from fan as well as towards this red door at the north side of no man's land but that smoke that they're going to place down think about it if hypa sets the smoke towards this bridge here while that does allow the defenders to play more towards the bomb it's also going to allow Hypa to push up to newer cover. It's going to allow them to get office control. And from there, it's all strength. From there, it's just taking and winning your long-range gunfights with these players that will probably position, be positioned towards these dock trucks, towards storage, even in Toxic, taking a single-lane gunfight here. One unit wide, that gunfight could definitely be, go either way. I mean, especially if you're just going to spam through the door. We will see, I, I believe it is a Allegros as well as, as well as an Igmar come out. Um, I believe Mop, yeah, Mop on Massey is going for a spawn peak like I mentioned in the very first round. We'll see if Birdie counters it. Momentum walking the Razor's edge and Massius takes down Zombie Bacon with that Mop shot. That's exactly what they needed. That is exactly what they needed. Those entry picks are what they need, and now they know where they're going. The flame has been ignited. Let's see if it becomes a wildfire here as the charge is applied, just waiting for everybody to get there. Bomb goes out, bringing the boom. Fire flashes go out at the office, and now they're looking to make their way in. Uh, well, more flashes go off for the upper windows, and they approach their way in, making their way into office here. Momentum stationed right there in case they try to drop down the shelving. Shots! Birdie goes down! And now momentum take really just matters into their own hands here. Zillow goes down. Hypa not in a good spot as they make their way in. Frag goes out. That'll tag that'll tag Usozu a little bit. But now Inkeek right there. Bazi goes down. First loss for momentum. And Inkeek trying to make his way towards no man's land here. Here, you got You got Macius right there with that mob on real lamp shady. 
This is a shot, but it's trying to make it rotate back. Inkeith right there, making his way towards No Man's Land. I don't think he realizes the Sozu is right there. Macy is right there in case he goes for the defuse. Walking right into his Sozu's crosshairs. Razor takes a shot. Going for the defuse. Lamp Shady goes down. Is this the opening? Is this the moment? They make their way on. And Momentum takes the win. They're back on the board, baby. They are in the game. And let's see if they can bring it back for the break here. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff there from uh, Momentum. The initial peak. They got it. And then after that, they knew where Hypo was going. They used their prediction and just wasted all of their utility there. Hypo used almost four flashes. I believe it was three. And then they used one on office. So they used four flashes to get into one breach. And I mean, the anti-utility there from Momentum, that knowing how Hypo was going to execute, won them the round. Like I said, they are predicting these plans from Hypo perfectly. It's just they're not acting on it. And I mean... That anti-utility was perfect. It gave them the round they needed. And I mean, taking those 2v1s, like I said, the teamwork, like we saw last game, Masius and Voxel working together to kill Birdie on the Saber. We saw it again. They took a 2v1 on Birdie to kill the Saber. And they're finally figuring out, this is what we need to do to win these rounds. Hypa can't keep going this long. Let's take advantage of this and start, you know, stacking up rounds against them where they're making some small errors and using too much utility. And I'm super happy to see that. I am astonished that Hypa has dropped around so far, but I am gladly, gladly impressed to see, you know, momentum finally take one. They definitely have the capacity to, you know, bring it all the way and possibly win this game or even tie it. But we need to see more pressure from them. The ball has begun rolling. And now that we're on Phoenix Apollo, We'll see what they do as barbed wire will be placed, it seems, towards office for them. We're also going to see some sort of importance towards the southern side of the map for Hypa as they are aware that Arcade towards Shed is sort of going to be a strong position, as well as an angle from storage into freezer. I'm not sure if uh, Hypa knows this window is ballistic as it seems they think someone is going to peek it. We'll find out, though, as barbed wire, three barbed wire placements will come out as Momentum is actually going to be predicting a red door, it seems. Actually, super shorty. Um, Hype has marked it, and there could be a spawn peak, another one for Momentum. But now that it's been called out, it may be the end of the line here. Oh, ho, 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 ballsy play by Voxel. We're looking for a peak here. That arrogance might not be what they need. As he that closed red the door. door. Is open. Oh, he closed, closed the door and wasted the flash. <laughs> that is brilliant. And now Hypa trying to regroup after that, making their way towards storage here. Molly goes out on red door. Smoke goes out as well. Trying to open the doors to shed. But now looking for that push in the freezer. More shots going out. Nothing just yet. And it appears they've moved their attention with the red door over to freezer. As Razor right there with the attack with the AP-25, seeing what they do here. Shots through the red door, nobody home. As Zombie Bacon makes his way in, Razor right there. Takes shot, takes down Birdie. The backbone of the team is down. Throws a Molly, catch up Geek. Razor goes, two Mollies go out. It's Geek is hit hard here as Macius is right there with that Itmar, waiting for a push in. What a, pl what a move. They make their way in. Macius is right there. Shots go out. Lamp Shady goes down. It's Geek and Zombie stuck in the freezer. Zila makes his way in. Macius goes in. Macius goes down. Trade. Making their way into Shed. Could be looking for power here. Zilo and Zilo and Zombie Bacon all on their lonesome. Let's see what they do here. Knocking off power. the power. They don't have night vision. Making their way in. They are on arcade. They are awaiting that push. And for a moment, it seems like there is an advantage. Again, the pendulum of power swinging ever so rapidly as Boxel makes his way back to the storefront. Let's see what they do here. Zombie Bacon looking for the push of the freezer. He makes his way in. How are they going to approach this? That coverage on Teller. Not a lot they can do here. 30 seconds on the clock. Zeal looking to confront Bazaic. And now he's making their way on the site. Shots are exchanged. Nobody going down just yet. Bazaic goes down with the pistol. Silo goes down. Zombie Bacon all alone. Essie right there. Oh my god, not a lot he can do here. Boxer goes down. It is a 1v1. Let's see if Azozu can do it. Defuse goes out. He has to stick it. He has to stick it. He does it! And the freight train rolls on! Let's see if they get derailed here, or will they prosper onto their location as Boxel takes that win.
that was beautiful beautiful for momentum i mean wasting that utility on the red door and then on top of that just setting up lines of sight that sort of screw over hypo's plan it's just perfect. They're predicting these plays perfectly, just like I said. And I want to see more of that. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're providing. And I love it. I mean, two rounds now on the, on the board for Momentum. And remember, Momentum is on defense, and they're an EU team, meaning they have the disadvantage here. So getting two rounds on defense, and we'll see possibly a third, is going to be unheard of for a team that isn't, you know, per se, floggles or one of the other top tier teams like Slaughterhouse from North America. So I want to know, will they take three here? Or will Thief Rush finally be handed over once again to Hypa? Um, it seems Hypa actually wants to hit the button late and go for a wall charge towards the vault. I mean, one miscommunication here could mess up their entire plan. And it looks like momentum is aware of this. They're going to be barbed wiring club. They're going to be barbed wiring lockers. And they might be going for another spawn peak. Oh, how dirty is that? But we'll see, though. Not too many lines on the map just yet. We are going to see a flank watch coming from Hypa, as they will have two charges. A door charge will go down on lockers. And then we'll see a push through kitchen to wall charge into sight. I'm not sure what the idea is here for the barbed wire. They're going to have to bring a grenade. But I mean, with their utility so low, do they want to save that grenade and use it for a flank watch? Or do they want to use it on that barbed wire and commit to it? I mean, a lot of these teams, they're just now realizing we can't always use nades on kills. Sometimes we have to use them on barbed wires. And I'm thinking Hypa, they might start to realize that and they might pick up on what Momentum's doing. Spawn Peak, ooh, Spawn Peak is going to be there. Kick actually going to come out as there's going to be a barb and a mop waiting for Hypa. They might just, yep, they're just going to opt to go south side of the map. They're not even going to risk it. Good idea. Not going to blame them at all. Definitely smart strategy here as they make their way towards towards walkers here. Unfortunately for Voxel, he's not going to get that clip, but now they're making their way towards walkers and Adax. Any final thoughts I mean, before we start? This to... is definitely possible. North side of the map, backstage. If he gets that, I am going to scream. It's going to happen. He is going to happen. It's going for it. Oh, oh. no on Voxel, show some dignity, man. And as they're making their way out, will we do something here? Nothing, unsuccessful, making their way into lockers here. Looking to hit that button. They do have the grenade for that barb though. Keep that in Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. They could be looking for that push into hallway, but I don't think they'll be able to do it in time. Minute and a half on the clock here. We'll be looking to hit the button. Shady has the grenade and he's got to rotate to use it. Let's see what he does here. Not using the grenade, opting to push right on. Razor goes down, and now pushing into office. Those two defenders in there. One with the auto shotty, one with the Eggmar. Macius goes down. And Hypa starting to take back control. Let's see if they can get back in the driver's seat here. As shots ring out, I don't know what happened there. But now, Shady goes down. That's the first loss for Hypa. Wall charge. Let's do this, baby. They're making their way in the hallway. Molly goes out on office. I don't think they realize they're there. Zillow gets cut off. Get shot with the mop by Voxel. They're going to close it. They're going to oh. close it. Voxel did. <laughs> He's got it. And Sozu takes him down with the auto shotty. That is going to throw a wrench into everything. As Sozu is in there with the auto shotty, he can lock that down. But again, they have that smoke. They have the flash. They have the utility. Let's see what they do here. 30 seconds on the clock. Oh. Oh, no kill! A collat! Momentum! I did a collat! You can't do that. Voxel, no, you're not allowed to do that. That's just dirty. Oh my. I just want to say the auto shoddy, that wins the round there for them. Barely Absolutely. making it in. I mean, Zombie could have one shot the auto shoddy there. But the auto shoddy winning that fight wins momentum the round. That was just. That blew my mind away. And then the collateral, wow. Just the cherry on, type, on top. The icing on the cake. I mean, that was just that was just BM at that point. <laughs> I mean, Hypa, Hypa couldn't the, have done that. The first time in DPL history that an EU team has done a triple on defense. That is a first. We have that never is, seen something like that before. Wow. I mean, now that we're on a new set of maps too, Momentum might take this one. I mean, especially with now that they have this going, now that they have the momentum, no pun intended, now that they have, you know, just the energy that Hypa has, 
I mean, they must be feeling great. They must have just a rush of adrenaline, and they're thinking, okay, guys, let's take this home now. Um, we are on Golden Bagel, bagel though. Going to make me hungry. Goodness, Axum, can you stop oh. naming these maps? I mean, goodness. Um, but other than that, I mean, we do have a bagel shape here in Toxic. It is going to be a giant bat, which does have a good line of sight. I'm not sure if either team is aware of this, but these edges on the Toxic Waste, you can actually stand on. So what you can do is you can stand on the edge here on the bottom left of Toxic and run across and peek Green Door and then run away without taking any damage from the Toxic Goo. I'm wondering if either of these teams realize that as Green Door and Doc are looking like the most, most common idea here for Hypa. Break Room does seem like a concern for momentum, but they may just be setting up a player here. I'd especially like to see the mop here because, I mean, it has been doing work, especially with Voxel on it. I mean, two spawn peaks and a collateral is just nasty to think about. And it seems Hypa is opting for that split push. They are going to be going Green Door to Toxic and on Doc. Break Room's just going to be completely open for the defenders to hold as mop. Um, it does seem Allegros. I'm not sure about mop, but two Allegros is coming out. We will see Mop on Masius this round instead of Voxel spawn peeking. So we'll see what he can do. Please tell me they make this work. Hold your breath. Get your clips ready, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if Masius can pull something off. Tags him. A lot of damage on the a lot of damage on the zombie bacon. Smoke goes over. That'll shut down Box. That'll shut down Bait. That'll shut down Razor. Silo goes down. And now they're making their way to break room as well. Toxic pretty choked up here. Wham Shady making his way. Voxel goes down. It Geek goes down. And it is tied three to three here as they make their way onto shelving. A lot of a lot of stuff going on. It's so zoo. Macius is changing iron. Macius goes down. Bazai looking for something here. It's so zoo. So Bazai takes down zombie bacon. Birdie. Birdie and Shady. Last one's left for Hypha. Not a lot of not a lot that they can do here. They have that locked down. And it appears the turns have tabled as Birdie tries to secure this win here, making his way into servers to be looking to hit power at yep. Shady, Shady right there. Takes... They know where both of them are on the defender side as well. Let's see what they do here. Power comes back on, though. Could be looking for a fake out. Baza right there. Shots go out, making their way into office. Asosu goes down, not like this, not like this. Come on, Bazai, you can do it. Birdie making his way onto site. Shots are exchanged. Bazai, son of a bitch. And that will secure the set <laughs> for Hypa. Yeah, that round going to Hypa is huge. I mean, momentum has been stopped now in both a literal and uh, and metaphorical sense. I mean, now that, uh, now that Hypa is secured a round, after three rounds... Uh, for momentum, they're going to have a lot more confidence going in here, especially picking up the mop and saber. Wow. The positions were known there, especially at the end round, which was kind of a disadvantage for momentum. But I mean, the trades were there. And we just saw one minor mistake from momentum, just the positioning being given away. I mean, it's hard for, for Baziak to help his teammate there when he's just being pushed out. And that makes total sense. Haifa stepped back for a moment. They analyzed the situation. And they realized, okay, here's our mini plan. We're going to push one player at a time, and that'll give us the advantage in the fights because we know they both have Lagroses and they can't take close range fights unless they have a super shorty. We already killed the super shorty player, and I think we can just keep going. So that's exactly what they did. They took a moment, they stepped back, they analyzed what they were doing, they realized where both the defenders are, and they took advantage of it. And now we might see an interesting sort of map set from this. We saw three rounds from Hypo on attack, or on defense, excuse me. And then we saw three rounds of defense for momentum. So I'm thinking maybe we'll see three rounds of attack for Hypo and three for momentum, or we'll see one just come out superior here. As we are on Eagle Legion, this is your new Sea Store map for the eighth round of this game in the second half. So this map is generally just going to be a blow storefront and defuse map. You've only got two position for the defenders here to hold. You've got Freezer and Tellers. I mean, granted, if there was a wall charge in play for the defenders, I wish. <laughs> they could open up storage to, uh, to storefront, but only two entrances. That's going to be locked down hard. So 
we might have to see some sort of uh, interesting utility come out from both these teams. We will see some sort of possible nade spot come out here from Hypa in the back of storefront. I'm wondering if that hits. Because if that goes wrong, that screws over the plan. Very risky, but it might be worth it since Momentum is aware of what could possibly be coming. So Wall Charge is going to be in the hands of Hypa. So we'll see a traditional storefront play. We'll see the immediate breach as two barbed wires are actually going to lock down the back of storefront. I'm wondering who they're going to set here, and it's going to be an Igmar. They're setting an Igmar down in the back. Hopefully they realize this nade is coming, but I'm not sure how it's going to be done. I mean, power is being held, a bathroom is going to be held, and I want to know how do they react to this wall charge when they're so spread out, especially with a tub 12 and bathroom? I don't know how that rotate is going to work out. We'll see, though, as Wall Charge is going to be pushed up here and Storefront going to be at the point of siege. Making their way in. Pedal to the metal. Utility going everywhere. Molly goes out. Making their way onto Storefront. Could be looking for a quick defuse. Razor goes down. Vossel goes down. And they are clearing out Storefront and Freezer. As, as Bonsai trying to make a move here. Looking for a wall bang. Inky going for the defuse. Zombie bacon right there. Takes down Isozu and Bonsai. And there is Macius, all alone. Zylo right there. Takes out Zylo, good if you're looking for something here, but no, they get the defuse. And it is business as usual, as Hyper kicks things back in gear with a 5-3 lead. Yeah, I mean, what else am I supposed to say here besides that is just an obvious play map? I mean, some of these maps we've been seeing, you just, you have to go for the generic play. You have to just do the one charge and go for bomb because defenders can't hold that. You just have one person hold one one or two people hold each side and one person defuse. And what do the defenders do about that? They can't Molotov from Freezer from risk of it getting caught in the shelves. They can't Molotov from Tellers because they can't throw it through the teller hole. And if they open the door, they're completely exposing themselves. So what do you do? You try to sit players in the back of sight, which sadly Momentum did not do. But at that point, Hype is ready. They have a grenade ready for the back of the storefront. So it's just like, hey, um, that map's just a freebie for attackers, it seems. So that was just devastating. And hopefully, hopefully Momentum realized that. I mean, sometimes you just have to go for that play. And if Momentum does it as well, they definitely have a chance in taking this. As we are on to the next set, this is round nine. So final round in the set before we move on. And we should see all of the final utility come out here it seems like hypa is super aware of these wall banks that could be coming out from kitchen to the office as well as these lurk spots as they are going to be going for the breach in office momentum is aware of a backstage breach but they've clearly marked it off because you know wall charge is not available to the attackers anymore but office is definitely the idea here office is definitely the play for the attackers and it's definitely the idea that the defenders should be thinking about but because even though office it has a good bit of cover you just have so much more room to work with than lockers i mean lockers you've got like two walls you can wall bang office you've got so many more options and it just helps out so much more i mean even just a simple wall bang to keep somebody from rotating into the site could definitely help here as barbed wires may actually be a disadvantage to the defenders in this map you're going to be going down in club and lockers i mean not opting to hold lockers is a pretty big risk. I mean, they predicted this play, but will the Molotov be used in time? Actually, shotgunning the door, breach charge might not be used here. I wonder what they're thinking as a lot of Hypa has double flashes. This might be bad. Not a smart decision as they placed it on the door. Flashes go out, Molotov goes out. Members of Hypa getting tagged. Bonsai goes down. Zombie Bacon. Zombie Bacon out in the open, takes down Isozu for a double kill. And now they have cleared out Office. Vossel with that auto shot, he backstage. Let's see what they do here. Shop's going out on Razor. Razor gets tagged heavily as they make, as they started to clear out Office and get their footing here. Molly goes out on Kitchen Door, gonna shop and he pushes heavy, heavy fire by Vossel with the, with the auto shot. He, they grab Clacker off of, they grab Clacker here, making their way into Kitchen. Molotov goes right off, right on the bomb. A1 Molotov by defense here as they go for that defuse. Fossil goes down. Let's see what they do here. Macius goes down. Momentum right there. Will he get the wall bang? He won't. Birdie right there. Birdie takes out Razor. And Piper has secured this. 
They cannot lose this, but let's see if Momentum can tie it off. I believe in them. Do you believe in them? Let's find out. I mean, Momentum is definitely... They were on the streak here, and I want to see what they can do on attack. I mean, Voxel almost had the clutch play there. I mean, if the timing was just slightly better, the auto shotty would, auto shotty would have gotten a triple care, kill there. And I'm just, I'm just thinking, wow, Momentum is on this. It's just these one or two minor things that's happening, and it's just messing them up in key rounds. So that one, yeah. that one crack in the vase that keeps leaking all of their plans. Well, let's see what they do here as we close in on what could be the final round for Momentum. This is their last stand. Hypa has that 6-3 lead. All they need is one win. One I mean, more. Oh, go on. Like I said, it's, it's definitely possible that Momentum ties this up because we saw three rounds for Hypa, three rounds for Momentum, three rounds for Hypa, and following that logic, we might see three rounds for Momentum. So hopefully they can realize that they still have a shot in this. They can make Hypa lose a lot of their points here if they end up tying it. And it seems like the idea here is toxic. Highway is definitely going to be a concern here for, uh, for the players on Momentum, but we'll see some, uh, we'll see some interesting ideas as lines will be erased and drawn once again. Hypa, it seems they're aware of this sort of toxic line of sight here. They want to set up a player for this. And what does that do? While that doesn't necessarily cover the door, it does allow them to cover any entrance to the door. So maybe we'll see a mop on birdie first round trying to shut this down. Uh, maybe we'll see some, uh, maybe we'll see some other interesting plays, but we'll find out as, uh, as momentum they need to win these three so I don't, I don't i don't know what else to go over on this map i mean we've gone over it we've gone over how break room is just a strong position even though it is sort of a pinch point and the uh, the attackers and defenders are sort of and always end up at a standstill here i want to know what momentum does to bring this back as hypa you know they have they have the advantage here one round and they've got it and birdie like i said is on the mop. So uh, we'll see what they do. Hypo looking to lock down this win by Timothy, like Timothy Thatcher. Well, let's see if Momentum can see if Momentum submits here as they make their way towards Toxic. I fucked that up. But now they're making <laughs> their way towards Toxic. Let's see here. Making their way towards Toxic. Let's see what they do here. Got that flash ready for a push onto the green door. Again, they have that red door. Smoke out. Didn't get all of it. But now they're making their way into Toxic here. Birdie's there. Smoke on Toxic. Birdie's right there with the shots going for the wall. Voxel takes down Zombie Bacon. And Momentum with the early advantage as they make their way. Isozu goes down. And now Mo Razor goes down as well. They are pigeonholed here. Let's see what they do here. Bazai looking for that opening. Bazai gets mopped by Birdie. And now Vossel and Macius all on their own. This is the last stand. Come on. Macius goes down. Double mob kill. Vossel right there. Come on, buddy. You can do it. He's got that AP25. Let's see what they do here. Molly out on the entrance to shelving. One way in. One way to win this. And that's through that barbed wire on the dock. Shots going through the wall. Vossel, come on. You got this. Vossel gets out. Shot. Takes down Zylo. Molly goes out. Right here, this is where it matters the most. That 2v1 situation. Voxel, we've seen it. It comes down to these, and they can't pull it off. Let's see if they can do it right now. No utility left. All their utility has been used. Let's see what Voxel does here. Makes his way on the docks. Come on. He takes down Shady. Let's see if he had clutched this. 26 seconds on the clock. Birdie right there with that mob. Will he be able to do anything about it? He takes oh. them down and hype. Proving they are more than hype as they take this 7-3 win. Beautiful. Beautiful from Hypa. I mean, Momentum definitely put up a strong fight there, and I want to see more of that from them this season. I Absolutely. want to see more of what Momentum can do, because even though they only got three rounds that game, they just showed. They put up a really strong front in front of Hypa. I mean, there were just some very, very strong rounds there for both teams, but in the end, Hypa was just there in the beginning, especially with a dominant 7-0, and that's going to be three points today for Hypa. That, that ups them up to four points, and they're just set. They're set now.
So we'll see, we'll see what Hypa continues to do as the season moves on, as I really want to see momentum shine. Momentum got some of the key rounds that they needed, but then one or two small mistakes messed them up. So momentum and Hypa, both newer teams, I want to see what they can do, like I've mentioned before. I mean, Hypa. I like I said earlier in this game, I have no words for this game. This was astonishing from Hypa. And Momentum, while getting some key rounds, just couldn't close it out, I feel. They made one or two small errors that they could definitely work on. And once they iron it out, they're going to be one of the stronger teams in the league. Compelling game. And not a lot to be sad about on behalf of Momentum because they had that first ever clean sweep on defense for an EU team. That is something we've never seen before. Are you still here? Yes, I am still here. I mean... I, I'm speechless from this game, man. I mean, I, I really have nothing else to say. Sadly, unlike, uh, unlike last season, we're not going to have an interview. But I mean, I can't just imagine what is going through these players' heads. I mean, they must be super hyped right now. They must be on top of everything. They must be thinking, great, we've got this. We're set up for the rest of the season. Because a good start from Hypa is exactly what they needed. A tie and a win is perfect conditions for them now. And just thinking about all of this game, what momentum's done, what hype has done. It really shows me that, that both of these teams are going to be teams to, you know, contend against, to, to really show your will against. And that's what I want to see throughout the season. Other than that, I really, I don't have any closing words for this game unless you want to, like, talk about the individual player performance. Well, we saw Birdie. He was very good with the power weapons. Anytime he had a long-range weapon, he was always getting picks, constantly picking up there. But I, as well as we saw, um, we saw Macius having to step it up at a lot of the points here and really just convey the message that needs to be sent to his team, and really getting that communication down. And that's something that's very admirable as we have that game here. And that should just about cover it. If you want to give the outro ad acts, you can. I mean, I have nothing else to say, but ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to be going on a break here. We have another game getting ready for you. It is going to be SPG versus Mazer. So make sure to stick around for that. That one starts here in 30 minutes else at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to stick around for that game as Hypa going to be taking it 7-0 and then 7-3. GGs to both teams as I want to see more from them this season. And with that, uh, ah, we're going to be going to a break. So uh, get your water, get your snacks. We'll be back soon. All righty. You have a nice day, everybody.